Okay, awesome. Uh, hoping for the best always helped me. I don't know if uh, that's the essence of this presentation. Welcome uh, to uh, migrating massive databases uh, to the cloud session. My name is Aran Schitzer. I'm the product manager for the AWS Database Migration Service and the AWS Schema Conversion Tool. And we have a packed agenda. We're going to review a few services, AWS services that would basically help you migrate databases and data warehouses to the cloud. We'll see a demo by our two distinguished uh, database uh, engineers sitting here in front of me, Arun and uh, Ramya. Uh, no family names, because uh, I, I didn't get it right. And then we have the great honor of uh, having uh, David Yahalom. He's the CTO of Niatech. And he's going to present something new that we just launched uh, this week, which is a document. It's a migration playbook on how to migrate an Oracle database uh, to Postgres. So we have a packed agenda. Uh, let's start. Uh, by the way, we'll take questions after the demo, a couple of questions, and then questions at the end of the, of the session. Just hope I'm not here alone when the session ends. So if you're here, you've probably started the journey to AWS, a journey with AWS to AWS. And or you're thinking about this journey and you're questioning, where do I start? Where do I start this journey? How do I start moving to AWS? How quickly can I move to AWS? How can I leverage this opportunity of moving to AWS and re-architecting or remodernizing or modernizing my databases, my database layers, my applications? We are here to answer these questions or try to answer these questions and a little bit more. Two additional questions that we'll be answering today is, what happens if I have a huge database? A few terabytes of database. What happens if I need to move off commercial databases to an open source based one? This presentation hopefully will cover or give you some direction of how to start this journey. And I apologize, this is a wide room, it's not so I, I'm in between here, but uh, I'll, I'll do my best to cover all of you. So we're going to talk initially, discuss two services that I'm the product manager for. There are two services that are in one house, one under one roof. The database migration service, I'll, I'll either call it the database migration service or DMS. It's a service. It's an AWS service. You can consume it through the AWS console or through the API. And the service helps you to securely migrate uh, your data to AWS, your databases and your data warehouses to AWS. The other tool is a unique tool for uh, AWS. It's the schema conversion tool, or I might refer to it as SCT. And the schema conversion tool is a tool that you download from our website. I think it's the only uh, downloadable solution today. Uh, you download, you can install it locally, and you run it locally. Needless to say, the cost is zero. And uh, it can convert your schema, your database and data warehouse schema, from commercial databases to open source databases. And we'll go over additional features that, they have that we have with the schema conversion tool. So far, we're very proud of this number. We've migrated 45,000 databases uh, and counting. This is an official AWS number. Uh, and I think it makes it one of the more active migration service on the planet. And every time I say 
the planet, my manager corrects me and he says the universe. So we're good that either way. All right, so let's start, let's jump in into the database migration service. So our core belief in AWS in general, but specifically in the database migration service, is called DB Freedom. We want to allow you the freedom to do whatever you want with the database layer or the data warehouse layer. This is why we enable the move from commercial to open source, but we also we, we enable the move from, from on-premise to AWS, but we also enable the move from AWS outside, okay? So if you're not feeling comfortable with what you get, you think it's not fitting your needs, you think whatever reason it, there is, we do support migration up. What we do not support is migration between an on-premise and an on-premise database. The main reason is, first, it, it's possible through the product itself. It's not supported through the license agreement, okay? And um, the reason is that, and I'm not sure how many sh raise of hands if you've heard about DMS. Okay, and use the DMS? Okay, so we're narrowing down. SCT, if you've used SCT? Okay, so uh, we're a good percentage here. Um, the cost of DMS is relatively low. You can migrate a terabyte of data for sometimes uh, for three dollars if you compare it to a competitive solution it's nothing uh, what we did did do and launch uh, a couple of weeks ago actually a month already uh, time is uh, flying when you're having fun is that dms the usage of dms the migration service itself is free for migrations to aurora Dynamo and Redshift. Okay, so if your target is Aurora, both of them, by the way, Dynamo DB or a Redshift, it's free. So, what do we do? Which use cases do we support in uh, DMS? The product is easy to use, but it supports many, many complex use cases. Okay, so you can use the product in many, many ways. The list that I have here is a list of a number of most common use cases. For example, DMS, and we'll show how it works, helps you migrate business critical application because it's, it allows minimal downtime. It gets the two databases in sync before you switch. You can use DMS to migrate from classic to VPC or data warehouse to uh, Amazon Redshift. You can archive all data. DMS is a logical replication engine. It, it reads and can manipulate the data to some extent. So if you have a database, for example, of three terabytes and only one terabyte is active, you can use DMS to send the active information to one database and the archived information to S3 bucket and from there pick it up to Glacier or whatever your, uh, your choice is. Upgrade minor versions or skip a minor version. Uh, MySQL 5.5 to 5.7, a common use case. Uh, consolidate shards into Aurora. Since Aurora supports 64 terabyte, it's now big enough to hold the entire, usually, many shards of MySQL so, or Postgres. So now you can use DMS to consolidate uh, those shards. Another very common use case is 
offload data for analytics in the cloud. Uh, so sometimes you replicate data between a commercial database, an open source database, and Redshift, or S3 for data lakes, a very common use case that we see uh, with uh, DMS. And the last one is, since we support MongoDB as a source and Dynamo as a server, as a DynamoDB as a target, you can migrate data from Mongo to Dynamo, from Oracle or any other supported environment, and this is the list of the sources that, uh, that we support, to Dynamo or from Mongo to uh, any of the supported targets. As you can see, our list of sources and targets are not one-to-one, -one, but we are working to enable as many sources to be as many targets and vice versa, okay? Okay, so let's move on. Now we're talking about the schema conversion tool. Again, it's a downloadable tool that you can download from our website, install it on your local machine and use it. What does the schema conversion tool do, does? It helps you convert your schema. It basically scans your schema and your schema object and gives you a good view of what is possible and what uh, requires some efforts to convert. Same for data warehouses. So you'll see in the next slide or one of the next slides, the list of supported data warehouses. It can also, that's a common question that I get because uh, migrating databases usually requires migrating or modernizing some code in the application, usually more than some code of the application. It can scan your, your code, identify SQL statements embedded in the code and attempt to convert those. Okay, it can also give you uh, a good understanding, I mentioned it, a good understanding of the type of efforts you will need in order to convert your schema, but it can also evaluate your current license. So if you are paying to Oracle or SQL Server for an uh, in Oracle, the Enterprise Edition, which I'm assuming most of you are, and you're not using the features for the Enterprise Edition, it can give you uh, an assessment uh, of that. But if you're also thinking about moving from Oracle on-premise, to RDS Oracle, RDS for Oracle, then it can also give you the changes you need to make uh, for uh, moving. The last thing that I'll mention about SCT in this slide is that it can only also copy your schema and your schema objects. Okay, so if you're moving a homogeneous migration, meaning like to like, same uh, database, it can copy your uh, schema as well. Okay, so database migration is a process. It's a process that is, we obviously simplified it a lot, but it's a, we'll focus here on the two-step uh, process. The first one is I go through the assessment. I connect SCT, the schema conversion tool, to my database, and I, evaluate what I have and what needs to be done in order to move. I can try to convert it, I can copy, depends on what, what is that I'm trying to achieve. The second step is that I'm using DMS to move the data, okay? So SCT, again, is the tool 
that evaluates and assesses and gives you a good view and converts as much as, as it can. And DMS moves the data once the target schema is ready. Now, when you start this journey, and I get this all the time, is where do I start? I have 500, 600 applications, uh, sorry, databases. That's a good state. Sometimes there are like 3,000, 5,000. I don't know where to start, and usually these databases don't look the same, like they're completely different, the environment, the schema, the object. In SET, in the schema conversion tool, we have the migration assessment. What is the migration assessment? I connect SCT to the source database, and I press assess. The assessment gives me a good report, a good indication, sorry, it's not a good report, it's a good indication of the difficulty for migrate or, or converting my source to the different options that I have. In this case, just uh, if you can see, it, the database object conversion to Amazon Aurora. Now, sorry, I can't do it on all four uh, screens, so I'll do it here and there. Uh, but it, can, it gives you the same assessment in the same report for converting this oracle to MySQL, converting this oracle to Postgres, converting this oracle to Aurora MySQL, and converting this to uh, Aurora Postgres, and also what it will require to migrate from Oracle to Oracle. Same report. It gives you kind of, it, it goes object by object, and tells you how many, the green represents that I can automatically convert and the schema conversion tool will convert for you. Gray requires some difficulties of conversion and the red requires manual, not say a lot, but requires manual efforts. For example, Sequences are not supported in uh, MySQL, but they are supported in Oracle, so you'll have to convert your sequences. However, it also gives you instructions of how to do it, okay? So we're not leaving you in the dark. We're not, uh, it's, it gives you a good, in the, uh, calls out the object, and uh, what is the recommended action? Now, when David go, goes on stage, uh, he will go over a more detailed instruction, a step-by-step -step, uh, migration uh, instruction. Uh, so that's the schema conversion tool. This is the starting point. This is the starting point for evaluating what I have and how do I, what are the efforts to migrate, what are the efforts to convert or modernize if I if I want to. OK. Another capability that we have in SCT is, are the data extractors. So locally, on your machines, if you have a cluster of data warehouse, yesterday I met a customer with 250 SQL servers. You can download these extractors from the SCT, install them on your clusters, extract the data from these five supported environments. Sorry, it should be six. I don't know. We're missing, we are missing the SQL Server. I apologize. Green Plum, Vertica, Oracle, Teradata, and then Atiza. SCT optimizes the file and optimizes them for a redshift and pushes them to an S3 bucket in AWS. And then with a copy command, we pick it up into redshift. Okay, so that's another capability that the SCT has. So we have the assessment report. 
we have the license evaluation, we have the conversion capability, but we also have the, uh, we have the scanning of the code and converting the embedded SQLs, and we also have those data extractors. And in a second, you'll see that there's a new capability that we've recently added to migrate, again, large databases and data warehouses. So, I spoke about moving uh, databases. I spoke about converting uh, schemas. Now, I'm going to cover a little bit about the AWS Snowball. How many of you have heard about the Snowball? Okay, so that's better than DMS and SCT. We're, we're doing good here. We're in an upward trajectory here. Good. So, AWS Snowball, petabyte scale, data transfer, transport solution. It's pretty heavy, guys. I, now, this is empty. Imagine what happens when it has data inside. Uh, and the guys here had to carry it uh, the mile and a half from the entrance to MGM. So uh, this is it. What we have done is we've released. Just, uh, I'm not carrying it all the way there. So. We've released an integration between AW, uh, DMS and Snowball. And Snowball is, by the okay, we fixed it to terabytes. Sorry, I forgot that we fixed it. Snowball, the rule of thumb when using Snowball is when it takes you over a week to move data from your premises to AWS on your spare network capacity, then we recommend using Snowball. Now, you can push as many terabytes as you want over the network, obviously. Sometimes you'll even choke it. Sometimes you're in an isolated region. Like, we recently visited uh, South America, where network goes through Miami. Um, sometimes network is bad. Sometimes the files are too big. So, again, our rule of thumb is that when it takes more than a week to migrate your data to uh, AWS, then uh, consider Snowball as an, as an option. That's in case the snowball doesn't show up. Have you seen this one? Last year's? Okay, so if you're really serious about it, this is where you need to get. But uh, true story, the uh, um, logo police, since we changed the logo since last year, they wanted me to change the logo on the slide and I said, OK, but, so, but couldn't figure out the uh, secrets of uh, Photoshop. So uh, anyway, DMS and Snowball, what does it give me? First of all, five terabytes or more. It's usually five days in a good network conditions. Might be worthwhile you know, integrating or using Snowball. If you have many databases, maybe not large ones, but you have 300 databases, different sizes, maybe it's better to use uh, Snowball, a cup, maybe a couple of Snowballs. When you have slow network, when you don't want to choke the network, and the last one is sometimes there are security concerns. You know, there are um, compliances that requires, that do not allow you to move data 
through an AWS service. We don't do it. You push uh, the snowball and send it to AWS and we upload the data. So these are just the common use cases, but again, if you're isolated, if you have multiple locations, many, many good reasons that, uh, for use uh, the combination. Let me explain how it works, okay? Because I spoke about the combination and I want to speak about the, uh, how it works so you understand later what you're also going to see in the demo. So I said that we support near zero down, downtime. We used to call it downtime, zero downtime, but we changed it to near zero because the switching of the DNS also uh, requires some downtime. So in this view, I have my application users connected to a database that is not on AWS premises, happily working on the database, and I start a replication instance. Our replication instance are basically an EC2 machines that you can choose the instances that you want to use based on the volume, based on the, based on the IO, uh, many different uh, parameters. You start the migration uh, replication, the DMS replication. You connect, okay? You connect between the two databases. Then what happens is that we start you select, sorry, you select the schema, the, the tables, the schemas, uh, the databases. Again, DMS is a logical replication, meaning that you can choose tables, choose data, choose columns, choose, you can manipulate the data that's moving. Then you move the full load. So you move whatever is currently in your database. And when that is done, you move all the changes that happened while the database was moving. So the change data capture. Once these two databases are in full sync, you can switch the DNS and have your users run on the new database. Now this is true for homogeneous migrations and heterogeneous migrations meaning that I can do it from databases, of, for example, MySQL to MySQL, or I can do it from SQL Server to Postgres, okay? Now, regarding the change data capture, there's no agent installed. It's not intrusive. We leverage uh, the, the bin logs, the transaction logs, we call the native API of the specific uh, database, okay? So once the transaction, once the database starts loading through DMS, we start collecting all these changes and applying them once the database is uh, migrated until these two are in full sync again. So that's the basics of DMS. Now, how does the DMS work with Snowball? Because this is an appliance, uh, an on-premise appliance that you order from UPS. So in this setting, I have a database and a Snowball, and I have an Amazon bucket that I set up, my DMS instance, and my target database. So what happens here? So first of all, I initiate a local replication agent from my SCT. So this is a new capability that we've added. In SCT, you now have a local agent, a local replication agent that you install locally on premises. You connect all the pieces. So you connect the local replication to the source database, to Snowball, to the S3 uh, bucket and through the DMS through the, uh, to the uh, target database 
You'll show, we'll show it in the demo. And now you move the full load of the database, whatever size it is, you move it to the snowball locally. What happens in the meantime is that we're starting to copy all the changes to the S3 bucket. The blue line represents the CDC. Okay, so while I'm uploading the data to my snowball, changes keep happening and are being copied to the S3 bucket. I'm done, I'm disconnecting. Now look at my beautiful uh, graphics. You wanna see it again? No, it's good. Shipped to the AWS. AWS connects the snowball to the data center and the, off, the full load starts uh, downloading into the source database. To the, sorry, the target database. Okay, once we've downloaded the snowball por portion, we're now starting to copy all the CDC changes. Thank you. We worked very hard on it. <laughs> um, now, you can do multiple to multiple, okay? You can take many databases on one snowball. Again, uh, 90 terabytes is the capacity. You can order as many snowballs as you want. And I'm not sure about that, but you can enough snowballs. Uh, and move the data to different targets. Okay, so it doesn't need to be one to one. And with that, I would like to invite my uh, fellow database engineers, Arun and uh, Ramya, to give you the short demo that we prepared. Thanks, Arun. All right, hello, hello everyone. My name is Arun, and I currently work as a database engineer with the DMS team at AWS. Today we are going to uh, see a quick demo on how to migrate a multi-terabyte Oracle database from an on-premises data center into Aurora Postgres in AWS. So before I um, start off with the demo, that's exactly what we are going to do. We are going to use the newly launched Snowball integration with DMS and show you what, what, what steps to take and what we did in order to migrate that multi-terabyte database uh, from Oracle uh, into Aurora Postgres. So before I show you uh, the demo, I'm gonna walk you quickly through the steps we took in order to achieve that. First, we order a Snowball appliance from the AWS console. We then set up a Snowball uh, in the source data center. We then configure and install the local DMS replication agent, which is the new capability in SCT that Aaron talked about. We then use the schema conversion tool to convert the schema from the Oracle source to the Aurora Postgres SQL target. This is going to uh, migrate all the secondary objects, the data table structures, and everything uh, like that. Then we create and start a couple of tasks. One is a local task, which is going to migrate data into the Snowball appliance. That task is also going to take care of migrating changes into an S3 bucket in, in parallel. And we also create a remote replication task which is going to uh, start off once the bulk load data from the Snowball appliance is available in S3, so that it's going to keep the Aurora Postgres target SQL, uh, Postgres SQL target in complete sync, uh, sync with the Oracle source. Once that is done, we turn off the Snowball, we send it to AWS, and we ingest the data into Amazon S3. We check the status of the remote task once the bulk load data is available in S3 and then validate and test once the Aurora Postgres SQL target is in complete sync with the source. So as you know, migrating a multi-terabyte database uh, could take a lot of time, and it could take actually days uh, as well. So uh, what we've done as part of this demo is we have shot a video showing, through, showing you through all the important steps that we took in order to migrate that multi-terabyte uh, database I was talking about. So I'm going to run you through a part of the video, and then I'm going to invite my colleague uh, Ramya to uh, go ahead with completing the demo. So let's see what, what goes on here. So the, like, like we saw in the demo steps there, the first step is to order a Snowball appliance. 
We are currently on the AWS console, go to the Snowball console, create a new job to import data into Amazon S3. You give in all the relevant information so that the Snowball is shipped to the right place. Once that is done, you give the job a name and you choose a Snowball Edge appliance which is uh, compatible with the local replication agent. You choose an existing bucket or create a new bucket uh, for the ingestion job once the Snowball bulk data is available in AWS. And you also create or select an IAM role which gives uh, appropriate privileges to bulk load that data in, in the S3 bucket. Once that is done, you quickly um, set if you want to send notifications at appropriate statuses where, where your snowball is at, you could do that as well. And the next one is the review screen. You review through all your selected options, make sure you've, you've selected them right, put in the right shipping address, and request for the snowball. Once that is done, a job is created. You could view the job details to get a quick summary. And the way you interact with the Snowball is you use a Snowball client, which is a command line tool. You could do start downloading that in parallel as well. We'll see in a bit, a bit as to why this Snowball client is required. All the commands we are going to perform are documented. And the next step is to just wait for the snowball to be shipped from UPS. You get the shipment, and then you set off to set up the snowball in your source data center where the Oracle database is present. So for the purposes of the demo, we are uh, using our partner's on-premises data center. We bring it into the data center. We plug it to power and then connect it to a network within the data center to start setting it up. And once that is done, you power it on. And given this is an, a Snowball Edge, it's going to assign an IP address to itself as well. So that's pretty much what you need to do to set it up for use. Now that the Snowball uh, appliance is available in the data center, the next step is to install the Snowball client. And we need to do a couple of steps to unlock it and make it ready for use before we go ahead and use it to the local replication agent. Uh, for the migration. So let's let's look at how we install the Snowball client on the machine. You go to the AWS console again. You check the status of your Snowball. So it says it's delivered to you, which means you have the Snowball up and running, set it up in your data center. You download a couple of things. You copy the client unlock code and download a manifest file, which helps you authenticate into the Snowball appliance and un unlock it. At this step, we are just going to make sure the Snowball uh, client is uh, downloaded. And once that is downloaded, you install the Snowball client on an on-premises machine, go into the terminal, and that's the uh, command you use to unlock the Snowball appliance. You check the status to make sure the unlock status is set to success, and then retrieve the credentials for the Snowball uh, appliance to use it in a local replication task at a later stage. The next step is to install the local DMS agent and configure it. This is a very simple process. 
you download it, you install it like any other RPM, and configure it using a pre-configured script. You set up the password and the port number, and that's about it. And then you check to make sure the process is up and running. At this point, I'd like to uh, invite my colleague to continue with the demo and take it from there. Thanks. Thank you, Arun. I'm Ramya Kaushik. I'm also a database engineer on uh, the database migration service team. Let's continue with the demo. And now we'll look at how to create tasks using schema conversion tool. We are now in the schema conversion tool. And the first step is to set up an AWS profile. Use your secret key and access key that has access to all your resources. We then test the connection to the S3 bucket that we'll be using and storing the files in. Now that the test is successful, we go ahead and create a new project to migrate from Oracle to our Amazon Aurora Postgres. We are now testing, uh, testing the connections to the source and target database. Once the connections are successful, the next step is to select and convert the schema. In this demo, we are, uh, we are converting the data for extractor schema. Once the schema is converted, we go ahead and apply it to the target database. At this point, we have all the tables in the source uh, present in the target database, and we are ready to start the migration. Uh, but before we start the migration, let's just look at the number of rows that we are migrating and the tables that we are migrating from Oracle to Aurora Postgres. We have a bunch of tables, but uh, for the purpose of this demo, we are migrating line order underscore zero, which has 75 million rows. Now we are back in the AWS schema conversion tool. Uh, Arun spoke about the agent that he configured uh, in the previous step. We are now going to register that in the schema conversion tool. Once the agent is registered, we wait for it to become active. And now we can go ahead and create the tasks. When you click on Create Local and uh, DMS Task, SED creates two tasks for us. Here we give the Snowball credentials that we got from the Snowball client in the previous step again. Now you can see on the screen that there are two tasks. There's one main task and there are two subtasks. The first task is the local, local task, and the second one is the uh, remote DMS task. In this step, we are testing the connections uh, to all our resources. Once the task validation is passed, we can go ahead and begin the tasks. So the local task copies the data from uh, your source database to your Snowball, and also copies all the changes from uh, your source database to S3. And uh, once the files are there in uh, S3 after the Snowball goes back to AWS, that's when the remote task starts copying the data from S3 to your target. As you can see on the screen, the local task has now started, and it is copying data from your source database, uh, from our source database to Snowball. Once the files are in Snowball, it's ready to be shipped back to AWS. To get the Snowball ready to ship it back to AWS, we power off the Snowball. As soon as the Snowball is turned off, the Kindle will light up with the UPS shipping label. And the next step is to just drop it off at your uh, at a nearest UPS store. In 
In this step, we are just shipping the snowball back to UPS. Eran wanted me to make the joke about the snowball being heavier, but he already made that one, so I have nothing here. <laughs> so now uh, the snowball is in transit, and uh, we're going to make some changes on the Oracle database, uh, the table line order underscore zero, and we'll later see that it'll, it'll make its way to the target database. So we've inserted 1,000 rows to the line order uh, underscore one database, uh, table, sorry. Here we are going to check uh, the status of the snowball, whether it has um, arrived at AWS or not. We are back in the AWS uh, console and uh, we navigated to the snowball tab. Looking at my job, uh, uh, I can see that it's still in transit to AWS. When we click on it, uh, there's a button for track now that will tell us when the snowball will be delivered to AWS. So it says that it will be delivered the next day the, after I checked it. So fast forwarding to the next day, again going back to the Snowball tab, you see that uh, the Snowball is now at AWS. Once the Snowball arrives at AWS, the data import will begin soon and it's typically the next business day. Once the files are uploaded from Snowball to S3, we can uh, verify that they're uh, present in our S3 bucket by uh, running commands from our AWS CLI. Yeah, in the screen, um, all these files uh, contain the data from the bulk load that we did from uh, Oracle database to Snowball. Next, we'll check for the files uh, that were generated based on the 1,000 rows that we inserted in our Oracle uh, source table. Now that all the files are in S3, the DMS remote task uh, picks up all the files and then starts inserting them to the target database. We are back in uh, the schema conversion tool now, and you can see that uh, both the remote uh, and the local task have su completed successfully. So the main task shows 100%, that means our migration is done. We can now go ahead and validate uh, the number of rows on the target database and uh, verify that it matches our source database. So this is the... Uh, this is the target uh, Aurora Postgres database, and we can see that the count of the line order underscore zero matches the count of the source Oracle database. That's it for the demo. This is how DMS was integrated with Snowball. I'll hand it off to Iran now. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Worked very hard for this uh, demo. The alternative was to keep you here for five days and watch the entire process. But by, by, by the way, did you notice the guy that was packing the snowball and then the, he grew hair when he shipped it to UPS? You notice it? I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. All right. Uh, we'll ta I, apparently, I spoke too, for too long, so we, we'll take questions at the end. So I'll. David, uh, I'll invite David here to cover uh, the Oracle to Aurora cookbook. Uh, and then we'll take questions at the end with their, their microphone to, to the, today. Yeah. Uh, microphones here. Uh, yeah. I think I have mine. It's OK. You want me to have yours too? No, oh, it's a clicker. I think. Sorry. So, uh, hey everyone, I'm uh, David Yalom. I'm the uh, CTO of Niatech. We are a database consulting company based in Silicon Valley. 
and we specialize in uh, database migrations, specifically heterogeneous database migrations, uh, moving from commercial to open source platforms, moving from Oracle SQL Server DB2 to Aurora RDS um, uh, with MySQL or Postgres compatibility in Amazon. So um, for the past few months, my team and I have been working together with uh, Amazon to create a really, really cool uh, project. Um, it's um, the Oracle to Amazon Aurora migration cookbook or playbook. It's essentially a guide that can help customers and organizations who are um, looking into performing heterogeneous migrations where you switch database engines, for example, Oracle to Amazon Aurora Postgres, and help them with the process. Now, Iran mentioned in this presentation that Amazon, you saw a demo, has a really amazing tool, an awesome tool called SCT, Schema Conversion Tool. It's a great tool that can help you migrate your schema. It does the auto automated task of migrating schema objects, procedures, functions, tables, indexes, whatever you can migrate automatically from your source database engine to your target database engine. However, um, migration projects, heterogeneous database migration projects, always require some extent of human, of manual human intervention. That's because when you migrate, when you think about migrating an Oracle database, for example, to Amazon Aurora Postgres, you probably are using a lot of special Oracle features. I mean, Oracle, you know, is a great database. It has a lot of uh, features and, and uh, functionality built into the database itself. So when you're using all of those, um, you know, very sophisticated, very advanced Oracle features with your applications, for example, you might be using Oracle Advanced Queuing, you might be using Golden Gate, you might be using uh, Encryption, you might be using uh, DataGuard, Rack, XMLDB, JSON Storage, Result Cache, Partitioning, all of those great features. Now, some of them, many of them, um, can be converted automatically using SCT. So that's the place you should start with. Do the schema assessment uh, and do the automatic conversion. But some of them requires the manual touch of a DBA. And as, as a DBA myself, as an Oracle DBA myself, I'm proud to say that I'm not out of the job just yet. So what we try to do in this, in this document, uh, which is basically a 350-page document, so you might as well call it a book, um, is to provide you with the guide that shows you how you can combine the core functionality that Postgres provides in terms of the built-in support for Postgres functions that can provide equivalence to certain Oracle features, but also, wherever possible, to leverage the AWS-centric features, the AWS ecosystem, to extend the native capabilities that exist in Postgres, or more specifically, in Aurora Postgres. So this document, which you can, by the way, it was launched this week at reInvent. You can download it. You can go to the uh, DMS page at, uh, in AWS go to the Getting Started section, and from there you can find a link, a link for, to their document. So what this document, what this uh, playbook, cookbook, what this migration guide will help you with is basically with a feature-by-feature feature comparison between Oracle features and their equivalent Postgres and Aurora features. So for example, um, let's, let's talk about table partitioning. Table partitioning in Oracle is completely different than what is currently available in Postgres 9.6. And in Postgres 10, uh, added, uh, which was just uh, recently made available and hopefully soon will be available as part of uh, Aurora as well, added declarative uh, partitioning uh, syntax support. But Postgres 9.6 handles partitioning completely different than Oracle. So automatic conversions of all your partition tables will not always be possible. You might need to restructure some of those things. So this database migration playbook uh, covers for example, partitioning shows you the Oracle syntax for various partitioning uh, mechanism methods, interval partitioning, range partitioning, hash partitioning, and what is the best comparable th um, uh, equivalent you can achieve in Postgres. But it also goes beyond that. It discusses features such as Oracle Rack, Oracle Data Guard, Oracle JSON Storage, maybe you're storing JSONs in your document and processing them, Oracle Advanced Queuing features that are built into Oracle where you might need to leverage certain Amazon ecosystem components in order to achieve feature parity. For example, in about 30 minutes, I'm supposed to be at the Venetian, so, um, which I'm hopeful to, to, uh, to have another presentation, so I'm not sure if Amazon is working on a teleportation service, because if, if, if you are, I, I want access to the preview, please, because 30 minutes to the Venetian is going to be challenging. 
Uh, I can skip a leg day at the gym tomorrow, I guess. So, for example, in 30 minutes, I'm doing a lecture where I'm showing how you can do migrations from Oracle to Aurora Postgres. And one of the features I'm demoing is that, say you have an Oracle database using Oracle Advanced Queuing. Basically, it's a, it's a feature in Oracle, a great feature, which allows you to use your database as a service bus. You can queue and queue messages asynchronously. It's, it's, it's really fantastic. Postgres doesn't have something that's, that's comparable natively. However, so, so from that perspective, you might say, so well, we can't migrate because or, uh, Postgres doesn't provide a queuing service built into the database. So if you were migrating to Postgres on-prem, for example, you might be in a, difficult, in a difficult spot. You might be in a jam. But if you're migrating to Aurora Postgres, well, then Amazon, you can use the Amazon ecosystem. Amazon has SQS, Simple Queue Services. So using Lambda functions, you can actually create a Lambda function that will uh, encode uh, in Q and the Q, the messages from the SQS, and then from Aurora invoke the Lambda function. So this is one of the, uh, the so this is one of the demonstrations I'm doing in my next presentation, and some of the and these these types of topics are what we are covering in the playbook itself. So again, it's a great document. It's meant to be, by the way, a living document. This is just the first release. Uh, we've been working it for a few months, 350 pages, and we're just getting started. Uh, but this is just the first release. We're going to continue and expand it as more features are made available in both Postgres and Aurora and in Amazon. Uh, we try to take some of our, we do a lot of database migrations, heterogeneous database migrations, so we try to kind of leverage our best practices and our expertise and put it into the, into the playbook as well. So as we learn new things from our customers, as we kind of try and see how we can reach certain feature parities between Oracle and Aurora Postgres, we'll add this to the document. So it's very worthwhile to, when, when, once you download it and, 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 and read it and go through it, keep an eye for updated versions. Uh, they should be released uh, um, you know, at, at, a, at a relatively rapid pace. So this is the migration playbook. It's basically meant to show you how you can, oh, I see that some of the slides didn't survive the keynote to PowerPoint presentation that smoothly, but uh, you know what we can do. So anyway, the migration playbook isn't meant to replace DMS and SCT, of course, uh, of course not. SCT will convert your schema automatically, whatever can be done automatically. DMS will copy your data. The playbook you can use for the manual touch-up, manual interventions that will be required, but also, um, um, if your database administrators want to learn Postgres, okay, they, they, they are, uh, you know, they are amazing Oracle experts and they want to learn Postgres, so they can use the migration playbook as a guide to see how certain things and functionality that are used to do in Oracle, what is the equivalent in Postgres, including, by the way, some operational things such as what's the equivalent to the Oracle alert log? Where can you see you're running Aurora? How can you find um, um, you know, errors in the database or, or warning messages? How, how to, to accomplish that? How you can set up alerting and stuff like that. So this is the migration playbook. I really hope that you'll find it useful. Uh, it's been a labor of love for us for the past three months, and uh, we keep going to uh, update it as new features are made available. OK, thank you very much. Awesome. Thank I'm you, I'm off Dave. to the teleportation device. Thank you, Ron. Uh, lovely. Uh, we have like a minute, I think. So, uh, yes. The playbook? No, no. You have to go to AWS slash DMS. Press the getting started. It's hidden. We hid it really good. We did an awesome job hiding it. And only those that can find it can use it. You know, it's, it's a measure. But, but no, I'm joking. It will improve a location. You just wanted to get it out as for reinvent. And going through the marketing machine is a little bit more. Yes, please. Lock meaning changes to the schemas. Yeah, we do not. Uh, it's all documented, but. There are uh, limitations on which schema object we can uh, uh, replicate. Okay, not all of them uh, are replicated. But you don't again. Sorry, you don't. Not, you need to lock it. There are again some changes that will not replicate anyway. But they are all documented uh, in our. It's based on the source uh, database. Uh, I know I see here signs that I have to be out, so I'll, I'll, we're out. We'll be out outside taking additional questions, okay? Thank you, guys. <laughs>